Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Neo here, and I'm bringing you a video that should have come out a long time ago. My thoughts and my hopes for Infamous Second Son. Infamous Second Son is being developed by Sucker Punch, the same people that brought you the previous Infamous games, as well as the Sly Cooper series. So, to begin with, let's first look at the official news that has been released and announced already on Infamous Second Son. Obviously, the game is going to take place in Seattle, Washington. Uh, that's about, like... 45 minutes away from where I live, so it's actually relatively close, which I think is pretty freaking awesome. Um, one thing I wanted to point that we're, we're going to be getting out of the way is, yes, this game will have rain in it, no doubt, because it loves to rain in Seattle and, you know, just in Washington in general. That's why we're known as the Evergreen State and why we have so many trees, because it rains so much up here. So you don't have to worry about not having rain in an infamous game and, you know, cold being like, oh, I can't get electrocuted, which it probably rained in Empire City and New Marais. We just didn't see it, and you probably stayed inside all day. Um, how that man ever showered, we'll never know. But, <laughs> yeah, we saw rain was in the trailer, so that's obviously going to be a part of the game. Probably will be more so um, part of the game than we actually really think. Uh, not like gameplay-wise or anything like that, I'm just saying it'll probably show up a lot more in the game. Um, but yeah, so the game's going to take place in Seattle. And, uh, you know, Sucker Punch is actually from Bellevue, which is actually relatively close to Seattle, so that's pretty awesome. And our new protagonist is going to be Delson Rowe, a 24-year-old Native American. And that's actually really cool that he's going to be Native because we have a lot of Native tribes up here in Washington. So I think that's actually really cool that they're actually doing that. Now this game is going to take place seven years after the events of the second game in the Infamous series. Now for those of you who have not played the past Infamous games, I highly recommend that you do. There is actually a bundle out where you'll get the first two games as well as the DLC, the standalone DLC, Festival of Blood, which is actually really good as well. Lots of good humor in that, so I recommend that you check those out. But those of you who have not played the games, what basically happened was that our old protagonist, our main hero, Cole McGrath, um, was a bike courier in Empire City. And one day he was delivering a mysterious package and it ended up being uh, known as a device known as the Ray Sphere which was developed by um, kind of like a paradox version of himself named Kessler. And this guy was a part of the First Sons, um, the creator of the First Sons, which was a kind of an organization, uh, organization, a secret organization that ended up developing the race sphere. Kessler comes to give Cole uh, the race sphere to, you know, which ends up blowing up and destroying part of Empire City, but it also ends up waken awakening um, special beings known as conduits uh, that have special powers inside of them. The reasoning for this is kind of like Kessler wanted Cole to get his powers earlier than he did so that he could be ready to fight a powerful force known as the Beast. And I don't want to get too much into detail on that story because I don't want to ruin it for most of you that haven't actually played it, which I'd be surprised if you haven't already. It's one of the best offerings on the PlayStation 3. Um, but like I said, you can check that out. And I also don't want to go on to that too much because I don't want it to like, you know, take forever and take up most of this video and you know it's also been a while since I've actually played through these games so I don't want to be misleading you with incorrect information if I kind of like tend to mix the two games together or I forget something important um, but I am kind of playing through the games right now again because I wanted to because like I said they're a lot of fun and I still have the first second and DLC with me um, the DLC I no longer have on my PS3 just because I needed to make room for other stuff but I do have Infamous 1 on there because when the PSN went out, that was one of the free games I ended up buying, or not buying, just downloading, because I was like, hey, I liked it the first time I played it, so I'm just get it again. Um, and I have kept Infamous 2 ever since I got it, and I got the, you know, the Hero Edition, so I ended up getting the backpack as well. <laughs> and I still actually go out and I still kind of carry that around with me. It comes in handy, that's for sure. But anyways, I'm getting off topic, back to Second Son. So as I said before, not much is known about the story. All we really know so far is that, as I said, he plays Delson Rowe, a 24-year-old Native American who's in Seattle, and he's pretty much going up against an organization known as the Department of Unified Protection, the DUP, who is their job is to put up checkpoints and quarantine zones so that they can control the situation at hand, and by their situation they mean like the out-of-control bioterrorists, which are actually what the conduits are going to be called now in this game, and so that's basically all we know so far. Now my hopes for Second Son is that it doesn't fall too closely in line with Prototype 2 or Prototype 1 with, you know, the DUP being closely related to and kind of like Blackwatch from those games. I don't want it to be 
like that kind of. I already saw some similar things. I mean, like whenever Delson shows up and he like has his powers on, there's alarms that go off and you have to shoot the alarms to get him to stop. I mean, there's like these things that hover around and monitor the area in New York in Prototype 2 and you have to end up like, you know, blowing them up because if you actually get close and they see you using your powers, they'll actually set a, a sound off an alarm. So things like that are kind of similar, but I hope that, you know, Sucker Punch can actually make it feel unique and different from Prototype 2. I mean, there's always been this comparison between the two games from the infamous games and the Prototype games, but I'm pretty confident that Sucker Punch can pull it off and make it like, you know, relatively different. Now let's move on to gameplay. So gameplay wise, the infamous games have always had pretty solid shooting mechanics. I mean, it's more of a third person shooter over the shoulder kind of thing. Um, from the recent trailer and gameplay, it doesn't really look like they're going for the same kind of perspective. It's kind of more so, it looks almost like a weird power up blind fire kind of thing. There's a reticle that you look at and you use, but it's not over the shoulder now. Delson just kind of like, you know, you just probably click the button and you just move the cursor around the little reticle and he shoots that way. Honestly, I don't really like the way that looks and it looks kind of jerky and he kind of moves a little weird when he's shooting. But we'll have to see how it feels um, ourselves if they come out with a demo or anything like that or, you know, if they end up showing more gameplay. But from the first glance, I'm not really kind of digging on that. Um, for the rest of the gameplay wise, I mean, I was watching Broken Games video a while back on Infamous Second Son and he said that the games he thought were a bit too easy. And actually, personally, I feel kind of the same. I actually feel that Infamous 1 was probably more difficult than the second one. Um, Part of that has to be with the fact that there were so, so many bad guys, reapers, trash baggers, all hanging around and always on the rooftop shooting at you. So it's like, you know, you could never like walk 10 feet without getting shot at. That's one of the things that I find really annoying about the infamous games, one of my probably my only complaints, is that everywhere you go, there's like someone shooting at you and you can't like go 10 feet without hearing a gunshot. And it's just, that's the same way in Infamous 2, the militia were after you constantly. I mean, yeah, that kind of keeps you on your toes and it's like, it's more immersive, but at the same time, there should be just like an area where you go and like nobody's there except for like the civilians. Like, I mean, that's all I kind of really want. But the gameplay was for being terms of, in terms of being too easy, um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the infamous games always find a good balance between difficulty. But like I said, the second one was a little bit easier than the first one. But I mean, boss battles, maybe they could be a little bit more difficult, but I don't really have any problems with that. In terms of more missions, they definitely could add more missions because there's only like a few additions to <laughs> that rhyme. There's only a few additions to the second game. Like there was blast shards that were stuck to, you know, like, um, I don't know what they were stuck to. Some kind of like, they were stuck to like alarms or things stuck on the wall around the city and like as a good uh, a good Samaritan you had to go around like absorbing the blast so people that were stupid enough to stand around them didn't get blown up and then there was also the other kind of missions like you know uh, whacking around um, performing artists on the street in Numeray <laughs> as a bad side mission so that kind of stuff was like you know I don't know it, it could have been a little bit better and it could have been a little bit more thought out um, the uh, UGC portion of the game was actually very well done. I loved it so much. It was one of my favorite parts about Infamous 2 and why I kept it actually was because the user generated content feature allows you to actually make your own missions and upload them so that people around the community and the game world and on the forums could check out your missions, queue them up, add them, download them later, whatever. Uh, my only complaint about that was that once you published a mission, if you deleted your file, you could not retrieve it again. And you guys could not believe how many times I accidentally deleted my files and then like there would be times where I wanted to go update something or something like that and then I'd have to do a remix and republish it so there'd be like two of my missions out there and so that was kind of an irritating point for me is that you couldn't you know re-download your missions so that you could fix them again so if they can make an addition like that and add that to where you can that'd be great I'd also like to see kind of a theater mode added to the UGC content portion because that would be awesome if we can make our own cutscenes um, not just the comic book cutscenes that they added later in a patch, but you know something like that um, PlayStation move support is not necessary or you know, it shouldn't be required uh, But it definitely was kind of fun using that if you like, you know Lower the sensitivity to make it a little bit slower You can't actually use it and it can be pretty fun at times my dad actually You know I wanted to play, him to play festival of blood and he couldn't use the controller I don't know why he just isn't you know that isn't his thing So I had him use the move and it actually did fairly well 
until he started finding militia to, you know, beat around or vampires or whatever. Um, but that's another good portion of the game that could be added. Now in consideration of your time and my time and the time that's going to take to render this video, I'm actually going to stop this video here and I'm actually going to make a part two continuing on with the gameplay. So I encourage you to check that video out. Alright, thanks guys. Um, and what I just want to give you guys a quick update on what's going on. Uh, I'm going to be starting live stream soon. Live streaming my new series, the Quest to Conquer Babel, and also the Weekly Fighter. Those will be switching over to live streams as opposed to putting them here on YouTube. At their base and nobody's here. They must be down by the trains. Thinking the same thing. <laughs> It'd be nice if you could jump in this game. Oh, see, there's a bomb.